What we gotta do now is let's put that about. You missed all there. the excitement, Ben. I had a customer. Yeah, we missed it. Just like corner gas, see? Piece of angle iron, short pieces like that. See, so it slides in between them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just put it on end to stop her on it. Yeah. See, that would always ensure that you had room enough. Yeah. Here, I'll jack it up. You can just clamp. <laughs> okay. There, now just clamp the vice grips on the top of that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, how about the clamp clamp? No, the vice no, grips. No, just vice grips on the, on on, the rod. On the rod? Yeah. yeah. We can't beat the old stick. Down the back of the slide. We call that. That's this is square tubular steel. That is the uh, the shaft for the lever for this lever here. Right here, you can see it move, and it's it's made by taking a piece of square tube in here in this inside, and welding it to a piece of pipe, a short piece of pipe, 
and this outer piece is one size of steel pipe uh, larger so essentially this these two pieces of pipe constitute a bearing and there's one on either side of the machine and this is this is the lever that's just uh, for pinning the scissor, the bottom of the scissors on either side. There's one on either side. And so maybe you should film this going back in as well. Okay. And this is just a little shim in here. This is going to be uh, uh, drilled and machined. Uh, drilled and there's going to be a cotter pin in here because this has to remain loose so that it slides.
they're threaded. They're, they're tapped and threaded. Okay. Uh, you know, we're highlighting the differences between the Potter's Without Borders press and the uh, Dutch design press. The principal difference um, of the two presses is the method by which the uh, mold, the, um, the female mold, is brought up into position uh, to begin jacking. And in our press, we use a uh, an, what we call an H slide, and this is the H right here. And this H slide is made of um, a large piece of uh, channel, and um, the channel is one size larger than is uh, than the channel that's forming the um, um, uprights of the press itself and you can see this is this is the main frame channel and this is the H channel and this this H slide is uh, connected uh, so that it slides evenly and it's located in position with um, uh, tapped uh, bolts and you can see on both sides these these bolts are uh, tapped and threaded into the channel and what is not necessarily apparent, what is difficult to see, are gibs and there's a there are um, gibs on the back sides, there's one right here and and there's one at the bottom as well on either side and these gibs are formed from a reversed piece of the channel that, are, that is cut into position, cut and welded into position, and these are the bearing surfaces that, along with the bolts that are machined into the frame, that is what is uh, the eight slide is sliding on. The second thing that is substantially different between the two presses is the um, action by which the H slide is brought up into position. In the Dutch design press, the lever is connected to the uh, sliding mechanism by a si in a, at a single point. And we found that this causes certain problems. It, it mainly uh, is the reason that the Dutch design press uh, can balk and not slide smoothly. In this case, the um, eight slide is um, bearing on both sides of the frame, and at the same time, the lever action that brings it up into position is a scissor jack. And this scissor jack is constructed in such a way that um, it moves on both sides of the frame at the same time. And here we have uh, the scissor jack, this is the top piece, and this is the double bottom piece. This double bottom piece is slotted into a horizontal uh, lever. And the lever has got, that's the horizontal part, and that's the receiving part for the, for the uh, um, handle. The other part that you can see here is uh, welded onto the frame is a stop that prevents the, the lever from going too far. And this is what sets the height of the uh, uh, H slide as well and prevents it from overlocking. The bearing of the um, uh, lever is connected on both sides. There's actually two bearings, and the bearing is composed of two pieces of pipe, one that fits exactly inside the other. 
Okay. You can see on the lower arm of the scissor there are machined holes, a series of machined holes. This is done so that uh, if different sizes of molds are used on the press, the distance between the distance uh, from top to bottom can be changed. Effectively, this allows different heights of uh, molds to be used on the same frame without substantially changing the design of the press. After the um, eight slide is brought up to its highest position, which you see it in now, there is a slot that is machined in the top arm of the scissor, and this top arm allows the eight slide to, when, when the hydraulic jack is uh, being uh, raised, it allows the eight slide to continue sliding up to the uh, topmost position. The slide for the jack has not been substantially changed except that uh, there is a stop on either side so that uh, the jack can be slid into position without having to worry about locating it. In this, um, um, at this stage we have not yet machined a hole for the jack, but the jack is going to be uh, locked down with bolts. The bridge on either side of the uh, frame channel is composed of a half inch uh, bar, very similar to the uh, Dutch designed press. In this case, we've taken a piece of two inch, a short piece of two inch angle iron and uh, cut it and welded it into the side of the press and then the half inch rod goes from just below the cross member all the way down and it comes down to just above the bottom cross member. This gives the optimum amount of strength. The whole press and all of its components are cut and welded or bolt are machined in such a way that each of these components will unbolt from the machine and within about an hour the entire machine can be taken apart and uh, uh, tied up and uh, prepared for shipping. Inside. Two and three eight. One, two. Two and three eighths? Yeah, you're right. was originally two feet long. We drilled, we drilled a half inch hole at 23 and a quarter, which measurement is 22 and a quarter from this one, which is in an inch. Okay, then we cut through the half inch hole, we cut through the middle of the half inch hole and took that piece and put it up on the end and welded in six inch flat bar with a half inch spacing between them. It's the three quarter inch piece that we cut, cut off when we cut through the, middle, through the middle of the half inch hole and then we moved that up to the end and that's what 
hold the two, ha the two uh, flat bar pieces in place. Well, the good thing about this is that by taking it apart and putting it back together, I remember where things go in a way that I wouldn't. No, that's true. But if you're not taking the whole machine, I need to put it in so that. Did you? Get the holes in. It has underneath. This yeah. goes here like this, eh? Yeah. No. Put your foot. Is the shim going in with it? Yeah. So you don't want it to go. It's right on the end. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay. Get the hammer there. There you go. Okay. Two washers on the outside. Stole the handle, as Dylan said. Gee, it still works. Much different. Is it? We probably have something changed around a little bit. Oh, there it is. It feels a little stiff at the bottom, doesn't it? Of course we... Uh, okay, I guess a guy could grind the whole thing, but it's a pretty rough uh, channel, actually. This looks, feels pretty stiff here. Okay. So stiff. What did you uh, grease it with? Uh, your oil. Oh, right in that can? Just oil. Yeah. Right, and the sliders, so if you've got the channel, then you can make your own sliders, right? Yeah, exactly. But like these are just cut off pieces here. You